Hey there, fools. Big T here, and I'm back with another video. And this one will be me asking the question, why are people disrespecting Satoru Iwata now? Um, obviously, with the passing of Satoru Iwata, uh, some things that Nintendo uh, changed. Um, but I don't think it's anywhere to the degree of, of what people um, are trying to say. Uh, there's a contingency of people who seem to think that, uh, who talk about, you know, uh, you know, talk about Nintendo and uh, the old guard and how they need new blood and whatnot. And they seem, I see people that seem to put that on Iwata as being the old blood in a way. And that's just, to me, it's asinine. You had that, obviously, I think it was a year, a couple of years ago, maybe. Uh, you had uh, Michael Pactor, which... Uh, a name that I almost vomited in my mouth saying uh, his disrespectful comments after a water passed. Um, I'm not even going to repeat them. Um, the guy, because of that, is essentially dead to me. Um, because of uh, the, the success of the Switch, people seem to think that because basically Satoru Iwata is not in the way that the Switch is successful. First of all, Gamers are, they seem to forget things very easily and, and stuff in the, the past of uh, video games. Uh, recent history, not even like <laughs> that long ago. Uh, when Kimishima took over, he made a point to mention that everything that, especially initially, that was going to be uh, rolled out uh, having to do with the Switch was Iwata's plan. And the Switch itself is Awada's baby. Um, again, people might forget that, but the Switch, the NX, uh, it was Awada's planning. It was his baby. And I think a lot of that stems from, for some reason, it he gets so much disrespect because of the Wii and what happened with the Wii. Anybody, any CEO worth their salt, any creator worth their salt, is going to have some failures because they've taken, uh, because they've taken risks, and that's how you reach your greatest successes is by taking risks. And people seem to forget. Awada came in as the uh, president, um, got handed over, I think, in 2001. Uh, so basically, the GameCube was already, you know, ready to go and whatnot. And Iwata was coming into power at that point, 2001 to 2002. Please, uh, I'll, maybe I'll put a graph up when I go back and look at it. But uh, Yamauchi was, you know, the spearhead for the GameCube, obviously, and pretty much everything before that we know about Nintendo as far as video games go. So, um, Iwata basically um, had to come in and. Uh, make successful a console that he didn't really uh, he, he wasn't really the creative director on um, and that's not to say anything about the GameCube the GameCube um, like I said before I think had a disjointed nature and maybe that had something to do with the changing of guard at the time uh, so the direction of what we want to do with this console wasn't that clear I think I made a video talking about how I felt like the GameCube uh, the Nintendo didn't know uh, what direction he wanted to go with the GameCube, what the GameCube was supposed to be about. So it had some kind of, somewhat of a identity crisis, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so a lot of people would disagree with me, but that's how I felt. Um, and you know, same thing with the Game Boy Advance. Um, but you know, Nintendo's handhelds historically were going to be or great, and Game Boy Advance was no exception. It was also uh, a great success. But the Nintendo DS and the Nintendo Wii were also Iwata's babies. And we all know how great they did, right? Um, they were Nintendo's two greatest successes as far as home console and handheld. And for whatever reason, Iwata doesn't get enough credit for that. He seems to get more credit for what didn't happen with the Wii U than, uh, than the credit he should have gotten for what did happen with the Wii and uh, and DS. And I find that strange. And again, I say that gamers, I feel like gamers 
uh, have a short uh, memory span. <laughs> they don't remember things. And, you know, some of that maybe has to do with the quote unquote stigma of the Wii that it was, you know, it was a weak console. It was, sort of, you know, it was a mask uh, market console for grandmothers and parents and all kinds of stuff. Um, but I've professed how great that console is, regardless of these so-called stigmas. But he ushered in the Wii and DS were printing money. Remember the meme? <laughs> it prints money. That was a Wada. Those were Wada's babies. And the the thing is, I was actually going to do a separate video, but I'm going to add this little segment to this video, basically talking about the Wii uh, to Wii U and how I felt like that was a strange evolution. I made a video talking about uh, some time back about Nintendo's um, cycle, the uh, revolution to evolution. And the Wii obviously was the revolution and the Wii U would be the evolution. And it wasn't quite the evolution it should have been, I think. Um, uh, the evolution of the Wii should have been, obviously, um, basically Wii 2. Uh, a HD console uh, with, uh, you know, beefier graphics. You know, somewhat where, where the Wii U was. The graphics were fine, maybe a little bit stronger than what the Wii U did. Um... And not the gamepad. Now, I love the gamepad. But I'm again, I'm talking about a, a more sensible evolution from the Wii to the Wii U. So it wouldn't have been the gamepad. What it would have been is um, Wii Motion Plus, you know, uh, Nunchuck and um, uh, Wii Motion Plus and Nunchuck and Remote. Um, and yeah, obviously the strongest version of that that you can get, you know, a, a more refined version of the Wii Remote. Uh, and nunchuck and maybe some rumble in the nunchuck you know some advances like that so you know stuff like that and maybe the the, the Wii remote itself would have had a uh, rechargeable battery instead of uh, you know a uh, double-a batteries um, and it would have came with uh, maybe a pro controller and it would have just basically been uh, a HD um, console maybe somewhere between um, where the Xbox One is and where uh, the Wii U was, maybe somewhere in there, obviously stronger than the Wii U. That would have made more sense of, as an as a evolution of the Wii, uh, and not the gamepad. Now I love again, I love the gamepad, and it's one of my favorite controllers, but it just wasn't utilized to its potential, its fullest potential. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that. Again, we're going to talk about the old guard. I think Nintendo Japan's uh, board of directors had a lot to do with the Wii U shortcomings more so than Iwata did. I believe that because of the uh, the expense that the Wii U gamepad allotted, um, and again, that would be on Iwata because I'm, I'm sure he's the one, him and Miyamoto together, uh, came up with the gamepad. But because of that expense... The expense of the gamepad um, and you know the uh, the Wii U was selling at a loss um, you know but before you bought a game and I think they were handicapped by the board of directors because of the cost so some of the things they might have wanted to do they wouldn't able to do and one of those things to me would have been marketing uh, marketing is very expensive and you know it's ha always hard to gauge um, uh, what you're going to get out of marketing. You know, you may do marketing for something that and it does really well, or you may do marketing and it doesn't do really that much. So I think the marketing budget was probably stripped because of the cost of the Wii U um, to manufacture it itself. So that's why you got those wonky commercials. That's why you got, um, remember the the commercial where it was just a bunch of blocks, you know, where people playing different Wii U games? And to me, um, I would have shot that, you know, I would have shot multiple commercials in a day and they would have had that, you know, that main theme of that box, you know, maybe one of those boxes had, you know, Lego City in a cover commercial in it and one, you know, cause it kind of did that. If you look at those old dubstep horrible commercials that the Wii U launched with, um, it was a very cold kind of calculated kind of, uh, indie way of making commercials where you do you can make a bunch of commercials in one day um, using the same um, 
the same set and that's what it felt like to me so I feel like Nintendo Japan had a lot to do with uh, uh, the marketing budget and why it wasn't what it was because if you look at the Wii it wasn't like uh, Iwata being in charge they didn't know how to make commercials the Wii had great commercials very uh, very uh, astute commercials where you look at the game you look at the person playing it and you knew right away how to play the game and that's what's so great about the Switch is where uh, when it launched that commercial was very succinct and it let you know exactly what it was about but the Wii U was a little bit harder um, to explain and I, I feel like because of, like I said because of the marketing budget was being stripped uh, they didn't they weren't able to do what they wanted to do to explain what the Wii U was and uh, so like I said, I feel like obviously the Wii U was designed with uh, Iwata and uh, Miyamoto's uh, leadership, um, but they weren't able to do what they wanted to do with it because of the constraints, because of the, the cost of the system itself. Um, you know, Iwata, those guys all took pay cuts. Like, to me, that's commendable, but it's commendable because when something, you know, doesn't do well on maybe the Western Front or in other companies, People get let go. They get fired. Teams are disbanded. And that didn't happen with Nintendo. And to me, that's very commendable. That is also, to me, a credit of Iwata's leadership. And so you get you have this guy who had two astronomical successes um, as a, as a uh, president. I, mean, I guess he, he was president during game boy advance as well so you can attribute some of that to him like i said he wasn't there for the start of it i don't think um and uh, gamecube as well but the gamecube was a profitable console even though it didn't sell uh mass market uh same thing for the the wii u though the wii u ultimately was a profitable console um but it just didn't hit mass market so even his failures aren't crazy obviously they're commercial failures uh, market share failures, but they weren't financial failures, uh, even though they failed to reach a mass market. But with the success of the Wii, people seemed to act like Iwata had nothing to do <laughs> with, or excuse me, the success of the Switch, people seemed to act like Iwata had nothing to do with it. Um, even though we've been following the stories of the NX all the way, you know, up until, you know, when it became the Switch. They talked about it multiple times. That this is a Wada's baby. This is a Wada's uh, plan that they're implementing. And I think because of the because the switch was not um, uh, did not cost more to produce uh, than they sold it for, that they were able to do more things. So obviously, with marketing, the marketing is much better. And it, it's not some renaissance. It's like I said, the we had great marketing the ds had amazing marketing so it wasn't like they didn't know how to market i think they weren't able to market because of uh budget constraints and they kind of shot themselves in the foot they kind of shot the wii u down before it had a chance um it had to be an overwhelming success for them to be able to do what they wanted to do with it and it wasn't that and when it you know when the sales slowed down they couldn't market it to get the sales back up the way they wanted to because of the cost of the Wii U. And um, I just think, I don't know, like I said, um, the guy, Satoru Iwata, is a legend. His footprint is buried in the code of the Switch itself uh, where they you know, basically salute him with uh, the NES golf game being in the code and you have to do the, um, the gesture of directly to you using your Wii remotes to get it to work on uh, the day he passed every year. It's only one day a year it works. And, I mean, that's just amazing. And um, it's just a testament that the Switch is his baby. And it's easy to forget that, uh, and, you know, with him being gone and it being successful. It's not like Nintendo was terrible <laughs> before uh, he came along because they were doing good. And then with him, they started doing amazing. And like I said, he had one uh, commercial failure. And um, and uh, I think, you know, partially with the 3DS slow start, he had um, you know, some worries there as well. But 3DS obviously picked up. 
after them having to push it and they pushed that one more because it was the easier sell than the Wii U was so I think it's easy to you know to uh, criticize in the throes of you know what's going on and what's happening uh, we all did that you know we all wanted this we wanted that and we were right to ask for these things but uh, now after uh, his passing and the uh, Switch's success, we can't forget what, who contributed to these things. And I think as gamers, we just, we we want, we want black and white answers, and we don't. Uh, there's not enough nuance with people in general, but in gamers, where it's just like, this plus this mean this happened, and it doesn't work that way. That's not how real the real world works. There is a lot of gray area. Uh, that affects what happens in video games and successes and failures. So I just want to keep, you know, I want people to keep that in mind. And uh, enough with the disrespect. Stop it. It's it's disrespectful and it's flat out wrong. <laughs> it's just you're incorrect in your assessment. So hey, I just wanted to make a video talking about that. Let me know what you guys think on this uh, subject, this topic here. Let me know in the comments below how you feel. Uh, thank you as always for watching and listening, and I'll uh, see you fools next time. Peace out. Please, let me go. I'm no good to you anymore. You got that right. Oh yeah, one more thing. Play Nintendo fools. Do, 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 do.